I want to come out here and uh, show you a video on how to fillet crappie. Uh, I've also got some white perch in here, good size ones. Um, this is not the only way to do it. This is the way I do it. Hope it's an encouragement to you. Show you what I've got here. I'll be filleting with a Mr. Twister Electric Fisherman. If you can see that. That is a double bladed electric knife with just a regular plug and uh, that is a good knife. Mr. Twister electric knife. Um, you, you can't get much better than that for fish like crappy, fish like white perch. I want to show you how I do it. It's simple and it's fast. And uh, I've had these fish on some ice, caught them two days ago, kept them on some ice water. Rinsed them off with the hose, got all the slime off of them. They're real clean, and all I'm going to do is fillet them. Try to show you how I do uh, my fillets for crappie and white perch and any kind of flat fish like this. So I hope it's uh, help for you. All right, so what I'm going to do, first things first, is have me a sip of coffee. It's a real nice, cool day here today. I'm going to start with the biggest crappie that I've got just to make it nice and easy. This this uh, this video with this big crappie should give you real good detail and clarity and it should make it super easy. And all I'm doing on this big one, I'll do the same thing on the small ones. I'm going to do the same thing on the perch too. Literally, with this size crappie, you should be able to see all the features uh, very well. So, I'm going to take it. It doesn't matter what side you start on. I'm right-handed. so. I always start on my easier side, which is the spine um, pointing toward me. If I was a lefty, I'd probably be more comfortable starting here, but it really doesn't matter because I'm just going to angle the knife dependent upon where it's at. All I'm going to do is take the fish. I'm going to grab this little fin right here and move it over here out of the way. And, and if you see here, uh, we can do a little anatomy lesson. Here's where that gill opens up right here. Basically, I'm going right behind that gill. But if you see that fin right there, that fin might get chopped off and I don't want that in my way. So I'm going to pull that fin out of the way and I'm going to go right here against the, the top of the spine. And then I'm going to the spine and you'd have to really put a lot of pressure to cut through these fish. But you can do it if you're not careful. You can chop through. So try not to do that. Then kind of tilt the knife forward to the belly. I am completely through now from spine to belly. And now I'm going to start making my angle. I'm going to take the knife and I'm going to angle it under that fish and just follow the spine down. Baby. All right, now I'm going to stop right here. I do not want to go all the way through. Do not go all the way to the end of the tail. I want to go right to where the meats and the tail come together. And, and I'm right there at the edge. I could have almost poked through if I wasn't careful. Uh, notice also while I was doing that, I'm giving, I want the knife to do the work, but I am giving some pressure. There's a lot of stuff you can grab. You can pull that fish. So as I came down and through, I was giving pressure here. So just keep that in mind. So now I'm at the point I have not cut through the tail. I want to flip this piece of meat over and I'll drag, if I had a bigger cutting board, it'd be a little easier, but I'm gonna drag the crappie over here. Now, I come back to where that, there's that little pinch right there. I do not wanna go down through it. I wanna go right, right, you'll, you'll feel it. As soon as you get it, you'll know it. I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna go all the way across and I'll have me a piece of meat. Let's see. there we go now we can pull this remove this from the skin now we've got an entire piece of meat okay we'll address that later real quick side note you notice I'm I'm doing this on a I'm actually doing this on my deep freezer which is the perfect height for me I want to be on the edge if I'm over here and that knife is interfering I cannot get the knife flush I want to be able to hang the knife right beside and get it flush to the cutting board okay 
So now we have this piece of skin. We're gonna get to this in a minute. We're gonna, we're gonna close that back up, make it look like it did before we even cut it. And we're just gonna flip the fish over. Now we're doing it kind of in reverse. That's where I was saying right-handed, left-handed, doesn't matter though. We're just going in reverse. I'm gonna pull that fin back. Now you can put pressure on, I always put pressure on the, the spine first and work down. Uh, or you can put pressure on the belly and work up. It doesn't matter, but you gotta get it cleared all the way through. go now we're gonna cut across all right again I was grabbing this fish here and I stopped before going through that tail flip it over and we're gonna find the sweet spot again you'll you'll learn come down and across very good now there's our two fillets now this if we do it right we can keep it nice and clean here's the whole carcass we just pick up by the tail and then we toss it down in here, here we have our two nice looking these are good size fillets for crappy you've got a simple V shape on your little rib cage looking things it's a simple V shape a lot of people I know especially with smaller crappy, which we're gonna to get to some of those in a minute. They will not even worry about this piece of meat here. They will come, here's the V, you do not want any of these bones. You come right behind the bones here and you'll cut. All right, I'm gonna show you right now, okay? Here we go. All right, I'm gonna separate that like that. Now all this, this is all meat. I've separated the bones here. A lot of people will just follow that line straight through, take the meat, get rid of that stuff. That's not the way I do it. If I've got this V, look at all this valuable meat here. It takes a little extra time. Look at all this valuable meat. All I'm doing is a V shape and I'm getting this extra piece here. Now on a little tiny crappy, you may not even have this extra. It may be a straight cut across. It's your choice. But anyway, here's the V. We got a little scrap there. And now we have a perfect piece of meat. I will say there's going to be, if you notice here, there's going to be a little edge right here. It's kind of a... Um, got some scales in it you can pull that off now or later we're going to be rinsing these off in the sink later with cold water anyway but um if you want to see that right there you can pull that off now or later doesn't really matter but for the most part also this little strip here on the other side both here i'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and show you both edges typically are going to have a little trash but not much and there they are right there so now what we have here is one fillet both of the edges have been cleaned off and this piece, after being rinsed off, it'll be ready to go. I'm gonna drop it over here on something clean. Just lay it out. And we're gonna move on to the next one. This next one is it's the same thing. It's a V-shape. We're gonna go here. Make our V. And if, and if you cut through on accident, that's fine. Um, if it's a big enough fillet, again, you're gonna have enough here to fool with. If it's not, you may just throw that away. But this is a good size fillet. I'm gonna keep this. Take that V with me, separate that, there we go. And then again, you notice on this one, there's not near as much, and you'll know it if, it, if it needs to come off pretty easily, it's probably some of that trash. And then here you can see how it's darker, that line right there, this little dark line right here, you can even scrape it off with the knife that easy. Look at that, it just separated. This little piece of trash here, another fillet. So that's that. Let me show you a uh, perch real quick uh, These white perch when they're a good size it is definitely worth it to keep them because they're easy to fillet and they are delicious In the world of white perch. This is a monster <laughs> this right here um, That's a big white perch. We have a lot of these in uh, my home lake here uh, Lake Wiley and um, These are good eating and they are a nuisance fish. So the DNR Asks you to get them out of the lake anyway, so if I'm gonna throw them away I'll fillet them and eat them or give them to some cat fishermen but anyway same thing as the crappie it's a flat fish it's white wait till you see the fillet how it looks next to this crappie fillet here we go behind that fin get ready to turn stop before the thing and there we go loaded with eggs these perch eggs are a lot more golden color. And here we go.
flip the fish over. Same thing behind that fin right there. Now, what I've done here is, and it's good because I was, I didn't mean to do it, but I was gonna do it for y'all on this video, but I have cut through the tail. And so this would be a good opportunity to show you. So what I did was I cut right through there, got a little carried away. And so if it was connected, I would have flipped it. But let me show you what you do in that, in that situation. And I was, I was gonna hope to show y'all how that works anyway. So now um, I've got an opportunity to show you that. So uh, what we do in that situation is it is kind of a pain. You just gotta kinda get your knife, pretend where the fish was, and you just gotta, if you can get it started, you can get a finger in there and a little fingernail or something and it'll work. So if you can just get it started, just be careful around your fingers, of course. All right, I've lifted that meat up. Now I've actually got a hold of the, t the skin itself and we'll try to wedge that knife in there. And uh, let's see if we can do it. It's a little trouble sometimes, but we're gonna try. Hold on. I need to get a little more. There it is. Okay. Now I'm up under that skin back to where I was. And there you have it. So it's very, it's easy to make that mistake, but it's real easy to fix it. And again, now look, this here is just a good example of, of not having that complete V shape. This is what a lot of the crappy are going to look like anyway. This is where it's just a straight line cut to get rid of these ribs. Just follow the pattern of that rib cage, get rid of it, and now you've got one straight line piece. And uh, there you go, perch. Beautiful, beautiful fish, these white perch, and they are delicious. Lay that over here, here's the next one. Very good, there we go. And uh, you'll notice on those perch, there's actually um, not as much trash along the edges of the meat that you don't have to clean up like these pieces from that crappie. You don't find that as much on the perch, so um, you'll learn. You just you just make the meat look good, make it look pretty, and then when we go into the sink later, we're gonna rinse it off uh, even better. So let's move on to the next. So here's another crappy. I'm gonna stop talking and just show you how quickly this can be done. There you go. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna continue on with these perch and these crappy. All right, well, there you have it. Um, it's about 16 fillets. Um, it'll make a nice little meal, but it's so fast, it's so easy. This really works good when you catch a big quantity of fish. It was fast enough to where my coffee's still hot. Um, all we do is just, just I mean, with me, it's, it's just a water hose over here in the backyard, just spraying things off. And um, I'll show you what I love also. You know, which, this isn't new. I mean, this invention is not new, but you know, just a reminder how easy this is. It just comes right out. Everything else here's clean. Lay it down, and then the knife will come into two pieces like that, and you can rinse. And so all I've gotta do is rinse that right there off. I got my scraps in here that'll go off to trash, and then we'll head into the kitchen with that here in just a few minutes. So we'll catch you in the kitchen in a minute. All right, now we're here with, um these crappy now 
I'm going to lay these over to the side. What I want to show you is how simple this really is. All you need is one of these little guys right here or some kind of um, strainer, any kind of catch. I'm not putting this in here to fill up the sink. I just want water to pass through these holes. This is going to act as a catch. I'm going to lay it in here as a catch. Very simple. I'm going to get cold water going. And then all I'm going to do, I don't even, you know, these things are pretty clean as they are, but there's some microscopic looking little things here. All I'm going to do is run them under a real gentle, real gentle flow of cold water. And I'm just going to take my hands, always bare hands, and I'm just going to run through and just pick off anything that just comes off easily. I don't want to destroy the fillets, but I just want to pick off anything that comes off easily. All right, so doing that, very simple. And you also, so this is what I like to call... Um, my quality control time just like when I'm processing a deer now is the time to catch it don't catch it while you're cooking it or, or don't miss it when it gets to the dinner table catch it now catch it before you even pack it away in the freezer that's my philosophy with uh, deer processing catch it early so right now even though it's a crappy you never know there might be one bone one bone or one scale could could turn somebody off you know so just catch it while you can. I'm going slow just to show you how I do it, but after, and then I can just I can just lay it down here if I want. Uh, this is this sink has been disinfected and cleaned, and so here we go. On to the next. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'll probably lay them over here out of the way. I'd hate to rinse stuff off. Usually I'll get another plate, but this is fine for now. I'd hate to rinse off stuff onto my clean ones. So here we go. Just kind of a gentle. Just a gentle approach to it, getting off all the trash. You notice this is the perch, obviously. A lot darker here in the middle. This is um, just a beautiful piece of meat off that white perch. Now, and then here we go, I'm already feeling. So I got a little, a little like bone type thing here. I'm catching it, I'm catching it now while I have the chance. See all that, that kind of stuff, and get rid of that. Again, all we're doing is we're just removing anything that might make the eating of this fish unpleasant. Especially for someone who hasn't had it before, you know. You're trying to get someone to eat deer meat. And you sit here and you get carried away and process it real quick and don't pay attention to certain aspects of it. Someone has a bad experience, they may not ever have it again. Same thing with fish. Same thing with any food for that matter, you know. But anytime you're processing your own um, wild game or fish, just catch it early so you don't end up. And then that also, that gives you freedom while you're cooking. Just gives you freedom to not to worry about it because you know if it's your own stuff, you know where it came from and you know how it was processed. And um, like right now, I'm feeling, I'm feeling scales. And little nitty gritties just rent, just falling away, just going away. And um, I know when I pack these things away, they are going to be clean and ready to eat. This is why I use that catch. So that's all the kind of stuff that might have gone into uh, into someone's, you know, packaging or something if they wouldn't take the time just to rinse them off and, and, and take care of business, so. All right, now we're gonna do our final step. I actually, with this amount of fish, I would usually use sandwich bags, but I kind of have, I'm going overkill. Um, you know, I do everything I do everything above and beyond. Like I say, rinsing these slow, taking my time. I'm not using one, but two bags, double bagging. Some things, you know, you may not need to do, but I just, that's the way I do it. So here's how we do this. You get you, like I say, a sandwich bag would be plenty. This is pretty big, but you, you get your bag, you open it up, and all these fish are gonna be able to go into this one bag. 
with ease. Those are probably like two pounds or so of meat of fish, but are cold, cold water. All right, and we'll fill it up a little bit. We want to cover the fish. Okay, now, here's what we do. No air, we do not want any air. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna fold it over like this, okay? And just kind of push it like this. All right, now, close that up. Now there's no air in there, see that? There's no air. It goes down to this water, and then we're just gonna Fold it in half like that. That would be fine in the freezer, but again, doing things a little more meticulous, I'm gonna put it in here just in case it, for some reason, wants to get leaky on me. These things will freeze into a nice block of ice, and then when you're ready to cook them up, you can thaw them all day in the fridge, or you can put them in a sink full of cold water, drop them in there, just let them thaw out over time. I'm gonna put these in the freezer, and. That'll do it. Just kind of show you this is this is from a lot. This has been in there for a little while, and this is what I would usually do: pack them nice and tight in sandwich bags, double bag sandwich bags, and blocks of ice. And uh, these things will be they will keep for a long time. So there we go.